Hello and welcome to Into the Woods with Holly Wharton. This podcast is all about our journey into the woods of ourselves, getting to know who we are, where we are, and where we're going in life so that we can create the life that we want to live. It's about deepening your connection with yourself, taking inspired action, and really trusting yourself and your intuition. It's also about mindset. Our beliefs are such an important part of this journey, and there are so many ways for us to change our mindset so that we can more easily live a life of expansive joy. This podcast is also about going literally into the woods and spending time in nature, and how that can help us on our own personal journey of self-knowledge. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now let's get into this week's episode. Hello, adventurers, and welcome to the Into the Woods podcast, episode 392. This is your host, Holly Wharton, and I'm back with another exciting guest. Today, I'm talking to Carrie Ann McKenzie about normalizing tree communication. So this is something that I've been neglecting for the past year on the podcast, and it's something I'm going to be picking up a lot more. I've realized that Despite the fact that, you know, I've gone on national television here in the UK four times to talk about talking to trees and plants, and despite the fact that my best-selling book is about talking to trees, like, it's not as obvious on my website, it's not as obvious from the podcast, and I realized that I've spent the last year talking about outdoors adventures, not just because that's my thing and I love it, but also to kind of present myself as this kind of normal, grounded person. And I'm going to start blending the two sides of me more into my work from now on, which is why I'm splitting up my email list into people who want to hear about trees and weird stuff and people who want to hear strictly about outdoors adventures. So if you've had an email from me lately um, asking you to please click on a link to segment yourself, please do so if you haven't already. And I'm also cleaning up my email list. If I don't hear from people, I won't know what they're wanting to hear about and I'm going to be cleaning up my list. So that's where I'm at right now. My thing is, outdoors adventures really help me to connect with nature in a spiritual way and a very grounded physical way. I love hiking. I love long distance walking. I love trail running. And I also love talking to trees and having that spiritual connection with nature. So this week's guest, Carrie Ann McKenzie, has made it her mission to normalize tree communication. And I've realized that's kind of what I've been kind of doing through the book and through television appearances, but I haven't really stepped into that role as kind of, this is the thing that I want to do. And I'm now realizing how important that is. It's so important to talk about this stuff because, you know, I'm a normal person having a normal life. So is Carrie Ann. And also we talk to trees. So I think it's possible to have both things. I think it's possible to be kind of like an average normal person and also have this spiritual connection with nature. And I think the more we talk about this and the more we have these conversations, the more common it will become. I've had so many people write to me after reading my book and say, I didn't know this was the thing, but I've always felt connected to trees. And now that I've read your book, I've decided to try it and I can do it too. And I think this is a really important thing for me. And I'm sure also for Carrie Ann, like, this is not some special connection that we have. Anyone can learn how to do this. If you are open to it, you can learn how to talk to trees and plants and have this communication with nature. And it really opens up a much deeper level of relating to nature. So that's why it's something that's so important for me. So let's talk about Carrie Ann. Carrie Ann McKenzie has spent most of her life consumed by the magic of trees and living in alignment with the pulse of nature. She is on a mission to normalize tree communication and help others manifest magical lives through nature connection. Carrie Ann brings her work into the world as an artist, a magical life mentor, and a masterclass facilitator at the Treehouse Club. When she's not working, you'll find her rescuing and caring for wildlife, or spending time with her nature-loving family on the east coast of Australia. So I've got a link in the show notes to her Treehouse Club, which you can find if you go to the show notes for this episode. What are we going to talk about today? We talk about how Carrie Ann got into tree communication, how she receives the messages from trees, how she knows the messages are real. This is a 
question I get asked for myself many times. And finally, we're going to talk about why it's her mission to normalize tree communication. So I hope you find this episode interesting and useful. I will be talking more about trees, more about this spiritual connection to nature in future episodes. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoy this really great conversation with Carrie Ann. We did an hour for this episode, and then I clicked off for the recording, and then we talked for another half hour. We have a lot to say, so I suspect she might be coming on the show again in the future. So without further ado, let's get into the episode. Hello, Carrie Ann. Hi, Holly. It's so exciting to hear your voice and to be with you on this recording. I know that we spoke briefly before we hit record, but I have to say it again. I feel like the trees all over the world right now are just really happy that this conversation is happening and I just couldn't be honored, more honored to be here with you talking about tree communication. I'm so excited to talk with you about this. And you also said something really interesting to me before we hit record, which was that you went on a walk yesterday and the trees were commenting to you about this. Yeah. <laughs> yes, because I feel like they've been asking me to step into this for such a long time. And mm. I've been on such a journey of like, just not denial, but really being afraid to step into this area. And so they were really, really, really happy that I was taking this step to really put it out there. And as I was walking past, they were like, thank you. Thank you. Like <laughs> every treat. And I was walking past and touching everyone. I visited Jamila, who is my tree, who I'm sure I'll speak about later. But I like ran. I saw her and I just ran to her and I gave her the biggest hug. And oh. she was just so happy that I'm doing this and that we're having this conversation. Yay. <laughs> mm -hmm. So how did you first get into tree communication? Okay. Well, there's two really important times where tree communication came into my life. The first one was a little bit like more casual. I was in like a women's circle and it was like my first time kind of like connecting with women in a circle and they were all talking about this book and the book was called, it was by Aaron Murphy Hiscock and the book was called The Green Witch and I was like, ooh, witchy mm. talk, this is fascinating and they all were talking about how there's an activity you can do where you can connect to a tree. So I told a couple of my friends I was going to do it and they were going to do it too and then I did it and as soon as I practiced the activity, I actually I didn't see, I tasted the mm. colour yellow and I know that sounds very bizarre but at that stage I wasn't seeing images in my mind I have aphantasia so I don't see images in mm. my mind very often and so I tasted the color yellow and I went back and told everyone about it and they were all looking at me like what and I'm like yeah and then it was like telling me a story and they're like what and it was just <laughs> like I was like didn't that happen to everyone like I was so confused. isn't like, this how it works what? <laughs> You're like isn't this it and then I just remember thinking like, this is the coolest thing ever. I'm going to really like practice this. And I did it with a couple of other trees and it was just really, really, really fun. And I kind of just like forgot about it a little bit. I wasn't practicing it. And I also was still in that stage of really like new to anything that was like spiritual in mm. out of what I was used to, which was really Louise Hay and Law of Attraction and that kind of stuff. And this was kind of like, oh, this is totally different. <laughs> so some time passed and I was studying Eckhart Tolle's book and you had my daughter in the car listening to the audio book and just driving along like we live where there's just trees everywhere. So driving through the forest and I kind of had a thought like, oh, I wonder what like I amness feels like. And exactly the moment I said it, all the trees along the side of the road pulled together a golden stream of light. It entered my car, entered my body, and I felt complete detachment from my ego and oneness in a way I can't, I yeah. cannot even fully describe it. It was so so powerful and incredible and then like five seconds later my mind's like no you can't accept that what is that what was that oh my gosh you must be going crazy and then <laughs> I remember driving home going what just happened to me and I walked inside and I'm like okay I must be like fully hallucinating mm -hmm. and then my inner being is like no you're fully experiencing like this is what you've been asking for to feel and experience all of who you are. And then I went out the next day and I was just walking down the street 
and I could feel like my consciousness being pulled away from my body kind of like an out of body thing right Mm. but not like more like someone was calling me and like pulling me towards and it was a tree and I'm like oh my goodness what's happening and I'm like oh no not this again (laughs) (laughs) and I just kept on like thinking like don't pay attention to that don't pay attention to that because I honestly felt like it was the strangest experience Mm. ever and often when I speak about this people like oh it must be magical I'm like yeah magical for my soul but my ego was freaking out did not want to accept any of this and then I just felt my energy being pulled to all the trees everywhere I went and it was three weeks of not really being able to process it Mm -hmm. like my husband like found me in the bathroom on the tiled floors sitting next to a plant and he's like you're right mate (laughs) and I'm like not really and he's like what I'm like the plant's telling me to go to the forest and he's like Right. Okay. And (laughs) I was looking at this plant and I could see like golden sparks of light just dripping like off the plant onto my lap. And it was just like the most bizarre experience. And I confided in a friend and she's like, dude, that's the golden stream of light. Don't you know about that? And I was like, (laughs) no, why has no one told me about this? What do you mean? The God, the light. She's like, that's the thing that connects you to the universal flow of everything. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Wish I told you this three weeks ago because I've been in, like, internal hell <laughs> trying to process this and not wanting to talk about it. So that was really when I had my first experiences. And honestly, I battled a lot with accepting it. Mm. And then it was just a turning point where I thought, I'm all in. Like, I'm so, so, so all in with this. And I had about six months of being all in. And Mm. I was doing like tree communication readings and all kinds of magical, wonderful things. And then there was a bit of a change that happened and I I really stepped back from it. Yeah. (laughs) Are you okay to talk about that? Absolutely. Okay. It's a very entertaining story. So what I used to do with tree readings, and this was actually like a business coach said to me, oh, you can channel information from trees. Mm. Gosh, you should do that for people. So I had this little feeling inside like, mm, mm. that's not what you're supposed to do with this. <laughs> like, this is not quite what you're supposed to be doing. But I did it anyway, because it was advised that mm. this is something you should do. So I did it for maybe seven, I think it was close to seven people. And on the seventh person, I had a very unique experience. So the way I used to do it was I'd get in my car and I'd go, okay, what tree is going to help this person? And then in my mind, a tree would Mm -hmm. show me where to drive and where the tree was. And I knew that that was something not in my mind, if that makes mm, sense, because yeah, I yeah. at that stage still wasn't seeing images. So when I would see something, I knew it was very much channeled, like it was very much given to me. Mm-hmm. So I sat in the car one day and asked, where's the tree? And it was like a tree with a face. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, that tree has a face. <laughs> so I start following the directions, and it's a really long drive from my house. And I'm still driving and driving, and it's, like, really clear. And it kind of felt like this tree was, like, very, like, had a lot of authority, like it mm-hmm. really directing me. Mm-hmm. And it kind of seemed a bit off. And it was. I got to this creek and I followed the instructions and there was, you know, like a really nice little water and rocks and then there's a tree. And as you look up the tree halfway, it has a face. And I'm like, ah, okay, this is the tree. And as I approached the tree, he was like silent. Like no, usually the trees are like happy and welcoming Mm. like to have me there. And this tree was like silent, but was I could still feel like this was the tree I needed to connect to. So I sat at the bottom of the tree with my art journal and started like taking notes. And this tree was like, we gave you this gift for a reason. Not this is not the reason oh. not to do this. Huh. I was like, oh, what's the reason? And he's like, we gave you this gift so you could empower everyone with this gift. Hmm. And I was like, so like oh my gosh I'm getting in trouble by a tree (laughs) and went on to tell me that he was related to the fairies and the fairy realm of Mm. the area that I live in and that my whole purpose was not to channel for others but to empower others with the ability of channeling Mm -hmm. and so I thought ah 
that's actually making so much sense because there was a niggle. Mm. Like there was something in me that was like, that's not what I'm here to do. Mm-hmm. And I've had many conversations with Trace since who are like really happy to share their stories. And I ha- that's how I found you, Holly, which I think I'll get into in a moment. <laughs> But this was like I kind of, yeah, it's hard to describe, but it was almost like I was taking this opportunity away from these people to mm-hmm. be able to experience what it's like to talk mm-hmm. to a tree and have communication. And so I just knew that I wasn't to do that and that I was to teach others how to do it. So, yeah, that was kind of around the time that I started getting a bit like, oh, this is a bit serious, like too serious for play for me. Mm. And I went overseas to Iowa. It's a long journey. <laughs> And I just had this intuitive hit to talk with the lady and ask if she would like someone to come to her retreat, which was running a huge retreat. So I was supposed to do meditative art with the people there. I rung her a few months beforehand. I'm like, so I'm kind of talking to trees now and I'm teaching people like how to communicate with trees. Would you like me to bring that instead? And she was so excited. But if you've ever been to Iowa, it's kind of like remote, mm. the area I was in, and everybody was a little bit like, who is this strange woman who talks to trees? Like, who is this weirdo that's taking us all in the forest to talk to trees? <laughs> <laughs> and so it was next level, and I thought there's no way anyone's going to connect with them or anything like that. And what ended up happening was just remarkable. Mm. I had one girl who was just such a beautiful soul, And we were walking together and she just paused and she walked up to a tree and put her hand on it. And she said, it's talking to me. Like, and she's like, it said something. And I'm like, I know, that's (laughs) it. You know, like that's what happens. And then we did like a little bit of an exercise and there was a few people who just really resonated with it. And a lot of people who were very like apprehensive and very standoffish and felt like it was a bit of an insult on God, on their relationship, God. And I was so confused because the closest I ever feel to God Mm. or the end of God is when I'm communicating with trees. So I got back from that and I just started thinking that I was the biggest weirdo like (laughs) on the planet. (laughs) And then my mind let that story go on for quite some time. And I was still kind of like I was running forest bathing club sort of thing and still doing and dabbling a little bit, but Mm. not as much as my all in side of me was ready to go. And then we got to January of last year. Uh, It was really December, January last year. What happened was Australia literally burnt. I mean, there's no real ways to describe it other than just absolute horror. And I would go to bed at night and I would lay down and I could hear the screams of all the trees. Yeah. And trees were taking me. As soon as I'd close my eyes, Holly, tree would take me, like pull me through the ground and move me, like my consciousness, move me really fast and show me Mm. the fires. I could not handle it. I just was Mm. so emotional. I was weeping in the shower and I'm like, I don't know what to do. I feel so helpless. And I went to a really old tree. He's about 500 years old. He's a fig tree. His name's Joseph and it's actually two trees because it's a fig tree and then there's a fig strangler that's around the Mm. tree and they're both really old and really ancient. And I asked him, like, why is this happening? And he basically said it was like self-sacrifice that they had to do it. And I just was like, no, I will not accept that. Like I was just so like not ready to just process why they would like the reason for the destruction. And I mean, in hindsight, I mean, when I look back now, I go, oh, so much clarity came from that in our country about what we're doing to our land and Mm -hmm. how we manage and care for our land. It makes a lot of sense to me now, Mm -hmm. but at the time did it. And I just shut off. I just said, I'm done. I'm not doing this. I'm not being part of this. I'm going back to accounting. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, I'm so done. I just cannot be in this world anymore. (laughs) And it was so funny. Like I literally went, shut the doors. I'm not even going to talk about trees and I'm going to start like bookkeeping again, teaching financial management and doing accounting stuff and be like super normal (laughs) in my normal box because that's what everybody really wants me to be in that box. And yeah, I shut off for, uh, I think it was close to eight months Mm. and was during COVID that I was driving my car 
And I don't know if you've ever watched the movie The Greatest Showman. Have no. No, no, it, no. Oh, Holly, you have to watch okay. it. It's so, so beautiful. And it has songs in there about being who you truly are, you know, oh. like really embracing what it is that you are. The whole movie is just spectacular, but the music's beautiful. And it really has light codes like built into it. Oh. I don't know. If, you know, like really it does something to you when you listen and when you watch the movie as well. And so I was driving and I just said, I'm ready. Like I'm so ready to just be part of that world and who mm. I really am. And around the same time, I met a really beautiful lady who is actually a light code teacher, light language teacher, and Ooh. she client of mine for financial management. And we joke and say now that, oh, it's actually because you were here to make me believe I could work with trees as like a full-time thing. And so we're always laughing that she came to me for financial management, but really she ended up helping me with my journey. So yeah, I kind of got my confidence around that. And Mm -hmm. then um, I, yeah, I went to, I think it was about in August, I went into like a group coaching session and I started feeling like unwell and dizzy. And I was like, something's not right. Something's not right. And inside I knew like, you can't keep this up. You can't keep up this idea that you're a normal Mm. accountant. You just have to let it go. And I didn't. I just denied that. Intuitive hit. Really, really, really denied it. And then a week later, I broke out in rashes from head to toe. I got a lump on my thyroid. My blood pressure was spiking and dropping, spiking and dropping. And they were like, you, whatever you're doing. Stop it. Yeah. (laughs) You need to get rid of like as much as you possibly can. And yeah, I thought to myself, this is it. This is like your moment where you can really honor, like you're not listening to spirit and now your body is physically getting involved to make you listen. So yeah. it's time to listen. So I told all my clients, I'm packing up. I'm not going back to financial management. It's over. It's done. And I really transitioned from there into a healing phase. I worked a lot with angels, unicorn energy, dragon energy, whatever was available or coming to me, I was just allowing it to happen. And then I really went, I'm just going to talk to Jamila, who's my favorite tree, and ask her what she wants me to do, like what she wants from me. How Mm. can I serve her? So I asked her and she said, we want you to share the magic of trees. Hmm. And, I'm like, and then we had this really beautiful conversation about that and what that looked like. And then I said, okay, I'm going to do it. And I kid you not, Holly, it was just, it was insane because there was no wind anywhere. And Jamila just starts shaking her leaves, like all of her leaves start shaking. And I'm like, oh my gosh, she's so happy. <laughs> and I look across the road and there's like a whole reserve, like nature reserve. And all of the trees up the street just start shaking. It was like they were clapping and like wow. they were just so excited about the whole moment of me really stepping in. And I was like, okay, but I'm going to need some help because yeah. <laughs> I'm still not fully confident yet. So I'm going to need you to like help me with this process. And I just so many people have come into my life who are tree communicators or linked to tree communication mm. or nature reciprocity or the area that I love. Everyone's playing a part in me becoming more confident. Mm. And that's actually how I found you as well, Holly. Yes. <laughs> so would you like to tell that story? Because I love that story. <laughs> the best. And like, I always tell it and I, oh, Holly, I forget that not everyone's fully open. Yeah. And I have conversations and I'm like telling the story about oh, what happened and they just look at me like, oh, right. I'm like, yes, that's my life now. <laughs> it's just one big flowy, magical, you know, abundant world of goodness. But, yeah, it was really funny because I was walking my dog and there were these little trees that they had plastic around them because they're trying to grow them. Mm. And I heard like this like little niggle, like holly trees. I'm like, holly tree. Ah, oh, it's Christmas. And, you know, like I yeah. was thinking like the holly tree. And then I heard this really clear guide say to me, go to Audible, type in holly and tree. And I was like, <laughs> okay. So I do. And I click on your book and I'm like, what is this? <laughs> and I press play and I'm like, what's happening? 
this is my story. And like for two years, I've had this story in my mind about conversations with trees Mm -hmm. where I go up to trees and have conversations and write them in the book so that people get more comfortable with talking to trees. So I'm listening to your book and going, this lady's written my book. This is the book. (laughs) And I was like tripping out going, what is going on? Like this is next level. The funniest thing was I remember reading years ago, I think it's Elizabeth Gilbert writes about how there are ideas of books that just float around and they can drop into yeah so I'm like oh my gosh I'm having this moment with this lady I'm like well I have to contact her (laughs) like what do I say to her and I'm like just tell her the truth even if it sounds weird just say hi some little sapling trees like called out your name told me to look you up and you've written my story and it's great yeah so it was so bizarre but not at all bizarre because I've just come to really accept that there's something so much bigger yeah. than I think I even have the ability to comprehend happening. And the tree communicators that come into my life are always in a very peculiar way. And I'm always so excited. And mm. I think yours was definitely one of the most peculiar ones, but I've had other tree communicators come into my life in very bizarre ways as well. So yeah, it's really interesting how I found you. I figured that I don't even really have to try anymore yeah. with life just get to follow the trees and what they tell me to do and that makes everything really easy for me and enjoyable and fun and playful so yeah that's I love that I love that the trees are helping me with my marketing (laughs) I know it's so cool (laughs) and they're just connecting us oh I have to tell you a story about Ben so when I went to Iowa last year I had not been away from my family like I hadn't had a night away for like ever and I went to the other side of the world and I'm on this plane and it was from LA to Boston and it's a smallish plane and I sit down next to an empty seat and I'm so excited that it's an empty seat and then I see this clunky kind of man coming up the aisle and I'm like oh he's gonna sit next to me he's gonna sit next to me there was nothing to be worried about, but there was something about him that I was like, oh, there's something here. And he sits next to me and he smells like kerosene, like petrol. Oh, yeah. Right. Cool. And I'm like, oh my gosh, he's going to burn the plane down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to make it there. This is like me finally doing my thing and I'm not even going to get there. And I'm like sitting next to this guy and he's wearing like worker clothes and he smells like petrol and I'm just like this is not good this is not good and he looks at me and he's got a really kind face and he smiles and I'm like oh okay he's all right and I'm like but he still smells like he might burn the plane down (laughs) I pulled out I was like I don't want to get in a conversation so I'm going to pull out a book and I pulled out a book Shinrin Yoku Mm. and I started reading it and he goes oh you like trees and I was like yeah I love trees actually and We started talking and he smelled like petrol or kerosene because he does controlled burning for Mm. the sequoia, for the big trees in the States. And that's why he smelled because he was jumping on the plane from work to go and meet his wife who was, she works for the UN and she was meeting him. And we get into this beautiful conversation about trees and he kind of looks at me like in this really like, cute way like it's something sparked in him like all of a sudden he felt like he could trust me and I'm like and I must say he's about 70 mm. years old so this he's an old old man old-ish man and he just says to me I don't know why because I've never told anyone this before in my life but I feel like I can trust you sometimes when I'm with trees they speak to me and I grabbed his arm and I'm like I'm like, I'm a tree communicator. I just don't always tell people. And so we were like two kids in the back of the plane, like just so excited to have found each other. And we just had the most incredible conversations about his relationship with trees and my journey with trees. And he's just such a beautiful man. I actually got his email and have written to him since I've returned back to Australia. And I mean, just absolutely beautiful, beautiful man and an incredible moment to have people open up about it is Mm. just such a beautiful thing to experience. And I think that's what I love the most about meeting other tree communicators who haven't yet shared it. And I think, Holly, not many people do talk about Mm. it, but there's a lot 
of people out there experiencing it. And I think that's why this conversation is so, so important so other people feel confident enough to talk about it. Yes. I am shocked since I wrote the book, you know, since it came out almost two years ago, how many people have emailed me and said, thank you for talking about this because I do it and I thought I was the only one or I thought it was just this weird thing that I did. I emailed you last week. I went up north to be on television, just yeah. normal Channel 4, you know, national television here in the UK. And one of the TV presenters, Makita Oliver, said, my Reiki teacher told me to talk to Tree, so I've been communicating with Tree, so I'm really excited to read your book. Can you give me a copy? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> Oh, man, I feel like it's just an awakening that is just yeah. like happening everywhere. Do you feel like it's part of your mission to make sure that it's normalized? I love that you said that. I don't know whether you said that in your message to me or whether I saw it in your website or what, but I feel like it's a very concise way of saying something that I haven't stepped into. Like you would think with the book. And with the res- like the response mm. that I received from mm. the book, you would think I would have arrived at that place already. I understand the importance of talking about this so it's normalized, but it's like I haven't really stepped into that mission yet. You know, like I have no problems going on television to talk about it, but like yes. Yes. it's not something that I'm like kind of shouting to the world. Like I don't yes. lead with that when I meet new people. I still haven't fully stepped into this, you know? So oh, no, I, under- I understand. I, it's I, weird. I, I, yeah, I have so much residual energy mm. left over when I stepped away from it because mm-hmm. of the fear of it being weird or being labeled weird. I yeah. was always the weird kid because I could see ghosts and talk uh, to spirits. And yeah. so I was always, always, always weird. That whole idea what is what led me to, oh, well, I want to make it normal because yeah. then I won't be weird. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> I just let if I just normalize this, right? Yeah. Then I, then I can't be the only one, surely. <laughs> so it's like you know, it was definitely being born out of wanting to create some kind of community yeah. around this that isn't secretive. Mm. that it's not deemed ungodly like because it is God. Like it's mm. that's what the experience really is. Is being so present that the frequencies of the creator Mm. is felt in every moment. And I think that the more people like you and myself let go of the fear and go, hey, well, we're just normalizing it. I think we're way ahead of our time, to be honest. But I think that in the next 10 years, it really, truly will be normalized. And I had a little moment with the tree where the tree showed me like an alternative to how we live now. Mm -hmm. And the homes that it showed me and the way we lived together was just fascinating to me. And it just seems like there's such an opportunity Mm. to learn from trees about having more nature reciprocity. Mm -hmm. And nature reciprocity is a word that just kept coming Nature and reciprocity together kept coming up in my mind like so much and I couldn't quite work out what it was Mm. and all the idea about it. And so I went to a farm with my daughter and it's a like fruit tree farm and they take you on a tour and I'm left with the tour guide and my daughter and the tour guide is standing next to a tree and he's kind of like talking about the tree and he kind of looks at me and I look at him and I get that same look that I got from Ben. Like (laughs) we both know there's a lot more going on here than what we're actually (laughs) talking about. (laughs) He just says to me, he goes, he actually said it to my daughter, sorry, not to me. He said, if you put your hand on this tree, sometimes the tree will show you pictures and sometimes the tree will give you a feeling and even some words might come to you. And I like looked at him and I'm like, I'm a tree communicator. I know exactly what you're talking about. (laughs) He's like, a tree communicator? And I'm like, yeah. And then he starts telling me about how the owner of the property is a tree communicator. He's a tree communicator. Yeah. And these trees weren't producing nuts and the owner yelled at them. (laughs) And he said, I'm going to chop you down unless you start producing nuts because it it had been 20 years that these trees we're not producing any nuts. And he said it kind of like in a frustrated kind of jokey, very yeah. Australian, you know, like, I'm going to cut you down, you know, those <laughs> kinds of Aussie Okay, good, good, good. Because the first time I was like, yeah. that's, that's not the attitude to have. <laughs> <laughs> but the next, I think it was like a week, within a week, they started 
making nuts oh, and wow. I was like oh this is like such a funny conversation and then he we continued the tour and he left and then at the end of the tour he chases me like down on the street and he's like hey hey and he's waving his hand and he's got a book and he said you need to read this book and I'm like oh okay and he's like no like I'm getting like a real clear mm. you have to read this book and he hands me this book and it's called braiding sweet grass oh, yeah. and and I start reading this book and the first thing I see is the words nature reciprocity and it explains the whole concept of what that means and what it really means to be fully connected in a give and take with nature. Mm. And I was like, wait a second, this is the problem. This is the problem we have. Once upon a time, we all walked around communicating with trees, mm -hmm. communicating with the land. And we only took what we needed. Sufficiency was just a normal part of life. We weren't driven by the ego to consume and consume mm -hmm. and consume. And so there was this beautiful relationship. And then the ego obviously was got more powerful and more powerful and sort of took over the whole process. And then we lost that connection. And then we the patriarch kind of moved into different areas around the world and really squashed that out of all of the ancient cultures. And so coming back to that nature reciprocity is what I think the whole point mm. of the tree communication thing is mm. and nature connection. And it's way more than the individual, what can I get from this experience? It's more about what can I learn? How can I commune so that we can understand each other better and start to see trees as, as beings of light? Yeah. Just like we are. Yeah, I have received very clear messages when I was putting the book together that the trees wanted to help people reconnect to nature so that mm. they could have more respect for nature. Yes, I believe that's the whole, yeah. whole point of it all. And I think if we can move into that area, if yeah. we can really let ourselves connect to nature, yeah, we can get spiritual guidance. We can access a really deep friendship between ourselves and nature, but we can make this world a much better place than what we're currently leaving it. And I really, truly believe that something needs to be done now. And that's why the veils are being lifted and the communication is really clear because it's that crucial time and we're at that point where it, something needs to happen and now is yeah. the time. And so I believe that's why more and more and more people are experiencing tree communication mm. because it's essential to yeah. our way forward. And as you've said, the more we talk about it, the more they'll realize that it's a possibility and they might give it a try, even though it hasn't happened spontaneously to them. They're all secretly trying it, Holly. There's yeah. no doubt about it. <laughs> anybody that hears me talk about tree communication <laughs> is definitely trying it because I people who really like reject the idea, all of them have mm. all come back to me and had some kind of experience. Mm. And I always say like, don't you remember that one tree that you had a relationship yeah. with when you were a child? And instantly everyone can. I haven't met a person who doesn't have a tree. And I think if there's just one tree in your entire life and you felt something, there was some kind of magic happening there, that was communication. Mm. Even though you didn't hear it, feel it, or your conscious mind wasn't able to process it, that was a tree communicating with you through emotions and feelings and stuff. So I always bring that up with people. Because everyone's mm. got a tree. And yeah, like, everyone's oh. got a tree from childhood. <laughs> I, got a tree. I got a tree and then, oh, actually, I've got another tree. And so I think that even the people who are sceptical about it all end up having some kind of experience of their own because they always come back to me with, oh, so I was walking in the park the other day and I felt this and I saw this and I just love it. I think that... Mm. We don't even really need to try, Holly. We just need to voice it yeah. for people to start experiencing it. It's kind of like, I don't know if you've ever heard, I can't remember what community it was, but basically they see hundreds of shades of green and have language. Yes, for, yes, yes. Right? And yeah. But they don't have language for the colour blue. And so they don't see the colour blue. And mm. it's kind of the same. Like if you don't know it's a thing, mm. you can't even experience it. You can't even see it. You know, there is no way to be able to take that in because it's not even a possibility in mm. your mind. So I feel like if people just hear about it, yeah. then the curiosity is sparked and that's enough for, you know, nature to have a window, to have an in mm. with that person. So how do you communicate with trees? So like I hear a very clear voice in my head in the same way that I channel 
other types of spirits. But I do know that some people get images, which you said you don't. How do you get their messages? Oh, I definitely get images from Mm -hmm. trees. I don't usually get images in my mind, but I've been working on my chakra system to awaken that. Mm -hmm. And I do get flashes of images now, which is really cool. I have done since last year and trees would show me roots of, of where they were kind of thing through images. But mainly what I get is feelings. So uh-huh. a definitely like a physical feeling in my body. And then, and this is kind of like how my mind is explaining it, but my mind doesn't even know it's just coming up with a theory. <laughs> I think that I feel, and then my mind interprets a conscious stream of information mm-hmm. and I hear the voices and they have personalities, yeah. different sounds, some are female, some are male. Yeah. I know you talked about that in your book too, which I found really fascinating because I think I haven't been able to tell the difference between male and female trees. I've, mm. I'm not like into forestry and learning about trees and I've just signed up to be a horticultural student to learn more because I'm so fascinated by the unknown of this work that mm. I'm doing. I definitely have trees that the like mother tree, mm. Jamila, she's just down the road and she's a fig tree and she communicates with me. It's very clear, audible and also in feelings. And she shows me pictures of the children that have played underneath her when she's mm-hmm. happy. And she feels like, yeah, it's really hard. Oh, so beautiful. But she helps me really be a better mum because I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm not a natural mum. Everyone's a natural mum, I guess. But I was never planning to have kids. I'm like, Hmm. I'm not going to have kids. And so I kind of didn't, it didn't fall really easily for me. And she's really helped me with conscious parenting and how to, you know, really let my children be an individual soul and Hmm. not really control them. That's been her biggest, you know, influence on me. But some trees take me into their root systems and show me when there's something wrong with them. I've had Yeah, like a mix of everything. At first it was colours, Holly. So Mm. I was getting like colours and I could taste the colour. And my husband's like, what do you mean it tastes like sparkly orange? I'm like, I don't know (laughs) how to explain this. (laughs) That's all I'm getting. And so what I was doing was meeting a tree and then asking if it was okay for me to communicate with it. And Mm. then I would imagine like this is when I first started I would imagine that there was like an energy within my hands and that I would place those close to the tree and that the tree had its own aura and I could connect that way so that's how I kind of started out until I had my golden stream of light experience Mm -hmm. and then Mm -hmm. after that it was just like an open dialogue and it's not just trees so it's the ocean as well so I get the ocean pulls my stream of consciousness down to the real belly of the ocean and shows me things and gives me messages. And that's a really beautiful experience too, but definitely more trees than the ocean. Yeah. yeah. But I feel like it's kind of everything, Holly, like all things, they're all just waiting. Like there's a little park not far from where I live and I was on my bike cycling and I just heard a voice, get off the bike and sit on the swing. I'm like, oh, okay. Like, the children's swing. I love being a kid. I'll do that. Like, Pull my bike over. I'm like, I'm going to turn my back from the street because I don't want any of the street mums to see me like <laughs> on the swing. And I was sitting on the swing and in front of me, there was a big tree and then it kind of goes into forest. And I was swinging and all of a sudden it was like switching a light on. It was like switching a light on and I could see fairies and goblins and all of these creatures in the forest. And I was like, what is happening? Like, this is so wild. And I just kept swinging and the tree was like, relax, just relax, just relax. And there was this tiny little goblin that was like behind the tree and he would peek out at me and then duck behind the tree again. And I was like, whoa, this is just the most magical experience I've ever had. And I believe that that happens because I've spent so much time now Mm. accepting that that's all very normal. But then as quick as it came on, it was like switching the light off again Mm. and just seeing green and just seeing, you know, what you normally see. And I feel like it was a window, like a a glimpse into what's really there. And I'm like, wow, we don't see anything that's available to us. No. And I think that's so interesting that you said that because when I was working on the tree book, 
when I was at night collecting alone in the garden, <laughs> collecting the stories from the chalice well use, I f- kept feeling a tap on my shoulder. And when I was finished channeling the trees, I got this very clear message that one of my next books is going to be the elementals, the fairies and, and all of that. It's not time yet. I know I'm not ready for it. I and I can't so wait for that. Excited. <laughs> I am so excited for you to write that book. I just think that it's incredible the way that you're able to step into writing the books. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like one of those things where you know that those books are going to be the books that everyone hunts down in like yeah. 10 years time when everybody realizes how magical it is to yeah. be in unison with trees and with the elementals that your books are going to help so many people. Mm. And I'm so excited for you to write that. Do you feel like you have a history with the fairies or what is your connection to them? What, That's what kind the of thing. connection? I don't have much mm. of a connection to them. I have like a longing to connect with them. I mm. talk to them when I'm out in the woods. Like I feel yeah. there are things there that I can't see. I keep mm. asking them to show themselves. Um, but I feel like for some reason it's it's not time yet. But I, I definitely know they're out there. Um, but for yeah. now, my relationship has been more with the trees and plants yeah. than it has been with, with that realm. And I think that the trees and the plants are really like they're the gateway yeah. to the next realm. Yeah. And I think you really do have to be um, not really open, but like it's a different kind of energy. It's more like mm. a receptive energy, like you're ready to receive yeah. you know, that amount because that amount is it's a lot. And I always think back to I've done like past life regressions and back to past lives and I always have this feeling that I just have a very strong connection to fairies and Mm. elementals, but I still am a little bit like um, exploring it and Mm. learning about it. I wouldn't say that I'm an expert in any way, but I definitely just know that there's a deep connection there. And I I wonder if, you know, now that we've had this conversation, if you'll Mm. start to have like more and more of those visual experiences because yeah. you're visual you're visual aren't you yeah I'm very visual I mean yeah it, which, which surprises me that I get the messages I'm not an auditory person at all but yet the trees I hear a very clear voice and I channel it verbally and I record it on my mm. phone that's how I get their messages I'm surprised I don't get visual messages because I am such a visual person I think that's why I have such a longing to see the elementals yeah yeah, yeah. I think it's yeah it's interesting I think there's different, you know, different ways that they they yeah. show things to us and yeah. we just have to kind of accept what those are. And so for me, I kind of figure the reason I see the images is because I'm not gifted with that ability. Mm. If someone says, can you see a ball in your mind? I'm like, no. Like, mm. Holly, five years ago I was in an office in my corporate job in finance and someone made like a comment about aphantasia in a Facebook mm. post that I saw on my lunch break. And I'm like, what? Hang on. <laughs> Is it like not an expression when people say they can see it in their mind? Like <laughs> I was so confused. I went around to like everyone in my office and I'm like, hang on. When I tell you to picture a ball in your mind, what happens? And they're like, well, you see a ball and it's red. or And I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> what is happening? Like, how is that possible? Like, isn't it just a saying? And everyone's like so confused that I can't yeah. see pictures. And so I think that that's why, you know, I, I'm allowed to sort of see it with the trees because it helped me believe yes, yes, that it yes. was really happening. And it's probably similar to you with hearing them yeah. because you don't usually hear. So mm. it's a little bit more believable when you have a very loud voice in your head <laughs> coming from a tree, yeah. it's really easy for you to go, okay, well, that's definitely not my imagination because that's not how I imagine things. Yes. And i that's my theory on it anyway. I agree. And can, I, yeah. can I ask you, do you hear different languages? Um, no. I hear different accents and different voices, but I only mm. speak two languages, English and Spanish, so I haven't heard any other languages no have you yeah and I don't know what's it, what it's saying uh, I went to a tree it's part of Joseph he this the Joseph is a big tree and there's the fig strangler I mentioned mm, before mm-hmm. and one of them is 
giving me a lot of information in a language I don't understand. Ah. And I, I wrote it all down. And when I um, looked it up, it was like Gaelic or Scottish oh. or something like some of the bits of it. Uh-huh but it didn't translate and I couldn't make sense of it. My heritage is Scottish. Mm. So I was like, oh, maybe there's something going on here where it's like some kind of ancient, you know, communications happening from my lineage. Yeah, yeah but I still haven't really worked it out yet. And I, I can't go to that tree. Holly, if I go to that tree, um, and I want to thank you too, because when I first started listening to your book, you mentioned in that book that, not all the stories are nice and not all the stories are like happy, like fairy tale. Okay. (laughs) So when I first was like, I'm going to draw trees and get their messages. I went to Joseph and I'd only been there twice before. And, and I never really noticed the, um, the heaviness Mm. of the tree. I noticed that it felt sad, but not the deep heaviness that that tree holds. And when I went to, draw I said can I draw you and he said only if you draw me seeped in my sorrows and how I really am and I was like I was so like oh my gosh and he is so so sad about what happened to the land here so where I live is like in suburbia and it's basically he's the only ancient tree in our area that's kind of left yeah and there's lots of trees but not any ancient trees and so Mm. he's very 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 upset that everyone he loves is gone and the clearing you know like it's you know clearing with you know boxes boxes of houses basically like really typical suburbia um developments you know Mm. and yeah, he was really, really, really sad. And if I get too close to him, Holly, he his energy is so strong mm. that it takes three days, oh, wow. three days to get it out of my system. And the first time I connected with him, I literally threw up. Like oh. I was so full on. So I don't often, <laughs> I don't often visit. I just wave from a distance <laughs> on my bike. Hi. <laughs> I'll catch up soon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> Finally, I find oh. the woman that can talk to me, and now she <laughs> she's avoiding me. <laughs> oh, I will send you a photo. Yes, please. He's, he's very spectacular. Um, but so I don't I don't get a lot of the the details about mm. what happened and and the Scottish accent and all of that. I have never explored that because it's just really intense when I spend too much time yeah. with that tree. <laughs> well, I think that's interesting because I don't know if you remember from my book the the four knights, which are near Avebury. They mention that we are capable of bringing all the things that we've learned from our previous lifetimes into our current lifetime. So I wonder if the trees are talking to you in Gaelic because they know your lineage and they know that if you activate that knowledge, you can understand them or bring it forward. Yes, yes. So, so, so true. And I think I was listening to one of your podcasts recently and someone in there mentioned about like visiting places and where would you like to visit and what trails do you want to do? Mm. And in my mind, I was like, I am longing for Scotland. Like I'm just longing for it. And I cannot wait for all these travel restrictions to be over so you can leave Australia um, (laughs) so that I can go to Scotland. And I know that there are trees waiting for me there because they call to me. Like I can hear their calls. Like, when are you coming? (laughs) Come to us. And I, don't even know where they are and I I kind of have looked a couple of times on the maps and gone like show me where you are but I can't pick that up yet I know it'll come to me but I can't I just can't wait I feel like when I put my feet on the ground there the welcome is going to be spectacular and I'm so excited for it and I got a welcome actually in the states when I got there when I stepped on the ground Mm. as soon as I stood on the ground all like I just felt all my energy pull into the earth there and shoot me off to all these different trees and I could just see like so many trees in my mind and they were all really happy that I was there and I just had the best experience there Mm. So I think I'll have the same thing happen in Scotland and I'll definitely be coming to visit you. Yes, and we'll go walk and talk to trees together. (laughs) 
<laughs> what do you think will happen? Like, I just, in my head, like, I just feel like the world is going to, like, explode when we, like, physically, like, are in the same energy and space and, you know, like, everything's going to sparkle and yeah. be magical and. I think it'll just be a really happy moment for the trees, but also for us too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All around. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know what you mean about feeling a strong connection to land. Because um, before my husband and I moved to the UK, I'd never been here. I just, we just decided to move here <laughs> randomly. Um, and the second I moved here, the second I got off the plane, it was like, this is where I belong. And I've never had that sense of belonging anywhere else. And now I know why it's because of the nature here, because I feel so connected to the trees and the land. And, and I feel so safe to go out like wandering hours on end alone in the woods, which I haven't felt in other parts of the world. So I think I, yeah, I don't know how you do that. Every time I'm like so jealous. I'm like, oh, she just goes out on her own all the time for hours. I want to do that. I keep freaking out if I go out on my own for too long that I'm going to get bitten by a brown snake yeah. and no one will find me. Like Australia is intense. Yeah, man. you, you like, have some scary not, things. So. <laughs> it is, you can't wander for a half day, a good hour maybe. <laughs> but after that, I'm like, okay, I need to go back to where there's like other humans. But And I think it's really amazing that you can do that. And yeah. when I when I think about you in the forest there, I think, wow, it must be so different mm. to here where it's really you know it's very tropical yeah. and and then it's extremely dry like there's the conditions are just insane yeah. and the and the kinds of plants and trees that grow here are quite pe- peculiar like because of those conditions so I'm really excited to see the trees in your region and what they're like because I I think they're more like the trees that um, okay, so I've been obsessed with the faraway trees since I can remember, and I feel like they're going to be the trees from Enid Blyton's books. Like mm-hmm. in my mind, I'm like, <laughs> they're going to be just like those trees. <laughs> if we climb to the top, we'll enter a new dimension. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> have you read the faraway trees? No, I haven't, but you're the second oh person gosh. who's recommended that book to me, so I'm going to have to it's get it. Time. It's time for you to read the faraway tree. It's, I mean, it's a beautiful, playful story about a group of siblings and a cousin who go into the enchanted woods and they climb up the tree and as they climb up the tree there's different characters so there's you know silky who's a fairy and you know different characters and when they get to the very top of the tree there's different lands so every time they visit the top there's a new land and so there's you know topsy-turvy land and like all these different lands basically and it's this journey of these children exploring the magic of this big beautiful tree so and the way that the trees are described I imagine um, they're very similar to to all the other places mm. other than Australia because <laughs> we just have a lot of eucalyptus trees oh but they smell so good oh and they're very 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 special mm. they have such a incredible wonderful feeling to them and yeah I I definitely want to explore more communicating with eucalyptus trees Mm. because they're more standoffish than the fig trees interesting interesting Mm -hmm. yeah and more standoffish to yeah just a lot like the the she oak trees um they're everywhere where I live because we're in a coastal area Mm. and they want to communicate like all the time they're like always wanting to chat to me Whereas the eucalyptus are really standoffish and they take a lot of time to to become friends with them before they share with huh. you. And so, yeah, I want to spend a lot more time this year actually connecting to them. And you have to really wait, you know, to yeah. sort of like autumn and winter to be able to do that because it's so hot here, Holly, like to sit with a tree for as long as I'd like to. I'm like, I'm like burning up in the air. Like I'm like, it's really hot. <laughs> it's really you won't hot. have that problem in England, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I love the cold. I'm always trying to convince my family that we need to move somewhere really cold, but that's it's not going to happen. It's just a pipeline dream for me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm aware of time, and I'm aware that it's very late where you are, but I could continue talking to you all day long. So maybe we should revisit this and, and do a second episode at some point. Yes, Thank you so yes. much for having this conversation with me. I'm really excited to share this with the world. 
so that we can normalize treatment communication and make it something that normal people do, not just weird people yes. like us. <laughs> exactly. Let's make everybody else as weird as yes. us and then everyone's normal and yes. we can just recategorize that. So, it's a yeah, new normal. Right, 100%. Yes. And I just want to thank you for everything that you're doing, for having me on here, but also just the work, the bravery that comes with it. I know it so well and I really admire you and look up to you and oh. I just think that your journey has given me a path of confidence and I want to thank you so much for that. Good, good, good. Yay. All right. Well, I will be sharing all the links about your website and everything in the show notes. But in the meantime, before we sign off, can you tell people where to find you online? Yeah, absolutely. You can find me at uh, themagicoftrees.com and there is also Facebook and you can find me there at The Magic of Trees and also on Instagram on The Magic of Trees. I think it's themagicoftrees.carrieanne mm-hmm. because Instagram wouldn't let me change it to just The Magic of Trees oh. and neither would Facebook. Yeah, yeah, huh. it's interesting. Yeah, I tried many times, but it was it was not happening. But if you type in The Magic of Trees on Instagram, you'll find me there. I spend most of my time there, but I also have um, some presence on Facebook as well. Good. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Holly. Thank you so much for listening. Please drop me a line and let me know what you thought of this week's episode. You can email me at holly at hollywharton.com or find me online and get in touch there. Thank you so much for listening. If you have any questions about tree communication or any other aspects of tree communication that you want to learn about, please let me know. I am currently working on a book about how to talk to trees. And this is another channeled book, just like If Trees Could Talk. So I'm collecting questions from people and then taking those questions to the trees and saying, how should people deal with this? How should people deal with that? And it will be a book. So I welcome your questions. Thank you so much for listening. And remember to visit hollywharton.com forward slash 392 for the show notes on this episode. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening to Into the Woods with Holly Wharton. You can find more information about today's episode, including links for topics that were discussed, at hollywharton.com. That's H-O-L-L-Y-W-O-R-T-O-N.com. If you'd like to connect with other listeners and get support on your journey, I would love for you to join my private community on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Holly Wharton. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com forward slash Holly Wharton. Thank you so much for listening, and I look forward to seeing you next week.